We're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have said President Trump's rhetoric helped fuel the violence that we saw in Washington last week. For more on how the president has reacted since then, I'm joined by Mary Trump. She is President Trump's niece and a psychologist. She is also the author of Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. Uh, Mary Trump, thank you very much for being with us. What was your reaction when you saw rioters bearing flags with your family's name descending on the Capitol and attacking it? It was unfortunately not a surprise, uh, given the very dangerous rhetoric uh, Donald has engaged in since the election was actually called long ago on November 7th. Uh, it was a direct result of his unwillingness uh, to concede the election, his insistence that it was somehow stolen or rigged, and it was also the direct result of the abject cowardice shown by his own party and its failure to stand up to his egregious lies around this election. Um, but that doesn't mean, well, just because I wasn't surprised doesn't mean I wasn't horrified. Well, in addition to being the president's niece, you're also a trained clinical psychologist, and you make the case in your book that to understand the president's behavior, you have to look at the influence of your grandfather, Fred Trump. You allege that he was emotionally abusive, and you say that led your father, Fred Trump Jr., to abuse alcohol, and you believe that's what ultimately contributed to his death at age 42 when you were just 16 years old. Now, President Trump has responded to your book saying, quote, Mary Trump is a seldom seen niece who knows little about me. But in your book, you write this, quote, the atmosphere of division my grandfather created in the Trump family is the water in which Donald has always swum, and division continues to benefit him at the expense of everybody else. It's wearing the country down, just as it did my father, changing us, even as it leaves Donald unaltered. It's weakening our ability to be kind or believe in forgiveness, concepts that have never had any meaning for him. Mary, what were the values that were prized in the Trump household, and do you see those on display now? The main value was to win at all costs. Uh, for my grandfather, life was a zero-sum game, and that included life within his family. And that meant there could only be one winner and everybody else was a loser. Given the stakes, uh, Donald realized fairly early on uh, that he needed to do whatever he could to win in the family because he had seen how horribly my father fared when he failed up to live to my live up to my grandfather's expectations. My dad was seven and a half years older, so Donald had the benefit of his experiences. The problem, though, is not only that winning was so incredibly important in my family, but that losing was literally considered the worst thing you can do. So for the first time in his life, Donald finds himself in a situation in which not just that he's lost, but that he cannot for the life of him figure out a way to turn the loss into a win, something he's always been able to do in the past because he's perfectly happy to lie, cheat, and steal his way to a win. So because he cannot overturn the results of the election as hard as he's trying. It's making him increasingly desperate and dangerous, in my, in my view. And in fact, you said in response to last week's attack that the president is, quote, unstable and that he needs to be removed from office immediately. Why? 
The problem right now that we're facing is not just that Donald is becoming more desperate, because remember, it's not just that he lost the election, it's what he faces once he no longer has the power and protection of the Oval Office. Uh, he's looking at lawsuits, he's looking at potential uh, financial issues with his bank, and he's also looking at uh, criminal charges. It's that he is riled up a significant and violent majority of people in this country who um, are taking his cue. We've also seen that Republicans in Congress don't seem to think that inciting a violent insurrection against our country is enough to put a stop to this. So Donald, once again, is not being held to account, and he's continuing to be enabled to do whatever he feels he needs to do in order to stay in the Oval Office. Um, I, I just want to clarify, because you said violent majority. Did you mean to say violent minority? Because um, I think in the, in, the, in the minds of those who voted for President Trump, many would say they do not at all condone those images of what they saw take place uh, at the U.S. Capitol. Yeah, of course. I apologize. I'm having trouble with numbers and time in the, in, no in the world of COVID. Yes, of course. A, a I, violent I minority is us... the I just wanted to make sure we didn't um, mischaracterize uh, or misunderstand what you were saying. So I do want to ask you about this, because a source tells our Major Garrett that Vice President Mike Pence is, quote, discouraged, disheartened, hurt, and stunned at President Trump's treatment of him, not even calling to check on him in the middle of the riot in which the vice president's life was threatened. Does that surprise you, that behavior on the part of the president not calling to check on his vice president? Not at all. We have to remember why Mike Pence was there. He was there to fulfill his constitutional duty to oversee the certification of a legitimate election. Uh, and because he was willing to do that, and uh, in this case, of course, that meant that Joe Biden's victory was being certified, Donald will have nothing to do with him. It's because Mike Pence, it doesn't matter that Mike Pence was fulfilling his constitutional duty. It matters in Donald's mind that Mike Pence betrayed him. So it shouldn't surprise Mike Pence either. He's seen what happens to people who don't toe the line 100% of the time. So I find his reaction odd, and I also find his unwillingness to do his constitutional duty yet again and invoke the 25th Amendment uh, even more troubling. So the day, um, uh, or not long after the attack on the Capitol, the president released a video in which he told the rioters to go home, a video that ended uh, with the president saying, quote, we love you, uh, you're very special. What did you hear in that early message from, that, from the president? I heard that as, as a message to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, that, that was infinitely more authentic than the other video he made uh, condemning their actions. So this is yet another reason why I'm not entirely sure why uh, our Congress is not taking this as seriously as it needs to be taken. I understand there is some level of urgency with impeachment. But they're still giving Mike Pence another 24 hours. Mike Pence has had 120 hours uh, to do the right thing, and he's refusing to do it even after the uh, insurrectionist mob incited by Donald was calling for Mike Pence's hanging. Well, the president, uh, as we've noted, has, is not attending President-elect Biden's inauguration. How do you believe the president will handle this going forward? I don't believe that he's going to get any better, that's for sure. Um, he's not attending. I never believed he would attend the inauguration because, on the one hand, that would mean that he was not in the spotlight. Uh, he would be ceding the spotlight to somebody else. And also, going to Joe Biden's inauguration would be a concession. And one thing we need to remember, despite all these videos Donald's put it out, he has not yet conceded the election. So he's still clinging to the idea that uh, he can change that result somehow. So um, 
that's why, first of all, we need to be prepared for anything in the next 10 days. And it would be really nice if we had a, you know, Secretary of Homeland Security. Um, but it's also incredibly important that no matter what happens, Donald be um, barred from ever running for public office again, because if he is allowed to, then as soon as Joe Biden's sworn in, Donald is going to start his 2024 campaign. I don't believe he intends to run, uh, but he's going to pretend to run and he will continue to have way too big a platform from which to continue to incite his supporters. Mary Trump, thank you so much. Really appreciate you sharing your perspective with us.